Picking out. Look. He's doing his pull. That's what we can do. We can race it. We can dig it. We got to show it to you all the time. Step on up. 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 Step on up.
We've got world champions on the team here today. We've got world record holders on the team here today. So, yeah. Let's welcome these ladies one by one. Our first competitor has been competing in timber sports for 17 years. Uh, actually, longer than that, almost 20 years. And she's made quite a name for herself. She just came off winning the North Haverhill Axe Throwing Championship. She is, yeah, she's a former world champion fire builder. She's a former world champion PV log roller. Yeah, she's a perennial favorite up at the Freiburg Fair Woodsman's Day, the oldest continuous Woodsman's Day in North America. And on top of all, she can bake. She can bake. Yeah. She is the former state Maine blueberry pie baking champion. <laughs> Let's have a big hand and a big welcome for Lorette. Our next competitor, though young of age, has been in timber sports for 22 years. She's been log rolling for 22 years. She's a former world champion log roller. She is the winner of last year's Lumberfest for the Underhand Chop Championship. She's an Iron Jill, and Iron Jill is a female timber sports competitor who competes in three or more events at a world championship competitive level. And she is one of the original 38 women chosen for the first ever United States Steel Women's Timber Sports Championship. Let's give a big welcome to Hannah. And Hannah's excited because she's going to be competing today against her mother-in-law. <laughs> yep. In fact, this young lady has been in timber sports competitions for 30 years. She's known as the sternest grandmother lumberjack you'll ever meet. Yep. And she's made quite a name for herself in that time. She's been selected six times to represent the United States of America at the World Championships in Australia. Yeah. She's also an Iron Jill. She's also one of the original 38 women chosen for that first ever Women's U.S. Timber Sports Championship. And she holds a long-standing world record. Nobody's been able to touch this world record for over 10 years now. And that is in the mixed crosscut saw competition. That's the Jack and Jill crosscut. She shares that record with her husband. From the great state of New York, originally from New Hampshire, please give a big hand to Andrea. And last but not least, the founder and the creator of the Axelman Loggers of Maine, this young lady has been competing in professional timber sports events for 17 years now. She is the one who put this show all together. She is a former PV Log Rolling World Champion. She is also a World Champion Axe Thrower. She's also an Iron Jill. And she's one of the original 38 women chosen for that first ever U.S. Women's Championship. Let's give a big hand from Bar Harbor, Maine to Alyssa. All right, we're going to get right into the action, guys. The first event's going to be the hot saw competition. The hot saw, these modified steel 441 chainsaws. The modification is that big black exhaust pipe you see there. That makes it a little, a little more powerful and a whole lot louder. Now, while they get their protective gear on, we're going to get you all involved in the show. We're going to split the crowd into two groups. It's going to be everybody against this guy here in the blue shirt. You know? <laughs> now, we're going to split the crowd right down the middle here. From here on over, you guys are cheering for Alyssa and Andrea. Let's hear it. Everybody from here on over, you guys are cheering for Hannah and Lorette. Let's hear it. And folks, if anybody gets any cool pictures or videos on your phone or tablets, 
If you don't mind sharing them to the Axwoman Facebook page or on Instagram or on the Fairs Facebook page and tag the Axwoman, it really helps the ladies out and they do appreciate it, so thank you. All right, they've got their protective gear on. The hot saw competition is a race, and the race includes starting your saw, and then it's two cuts, one cut down and one cut up. Whoever cuts through first wins. To have a better chance of these saws starting when we tell the ladies to pull that cord, they are now going to warm up the saws. Any little ears in the crop, any sensitive ears, you're going to want to block the ears of any children, okay? I think they're warmed up. <laughs> wow, they haven't even started racing yet. <laughs> Folks, to get you even more involved, we're going to have you guys do the countdown for each event. It's going to be a 3, 2, 1, go. Let's practice that now nice and loud because they got hearing protection on. You ready? Three. for Alyssa over here. Who's rooting for Hannah over there? All right, let's give them a countdown. Three, two, one. Yeah. And Hannah takes the first event. Let's hear for Hannah's team over here. All right, that's all right, Alyssa's team. She's got a chance to redeem herself in the next event, and that is axe throwing, right over here. So anywhere you go in the world that axe throwing is a competition, your rules are pretty much going to be the same. You've got to stand 20 feet away from the target. The target bullseye is always five to six feet above the ground. In this competition, the bullseye is worth, the red bullseye is worth five points. And then it drops a point each ring you go out from there. So it's going to be five, four, three, two, one. The ladies are throwing yes. double bit axes. Double bit means that there's two blades on the axe, the old fashioned axes. Now you hear a lot about axe throwing clubs and bars opening up in the area and all over America and they're very popular. Those are fun. They're throwing hatchets and tomahawks. These are a 24 inch or more length on a handle. And these are axes. These heads weigh up to two pounds. So they're each going to get a practice throw, and then three throws apiece. The high score wins. Want to make sure nobody crosses over into this area over here. All right, here is Andrea's practice throw. Here is Lorette's practice throw. Here, here is Alyssa's practice throw. Yeah. You can't skip your practice throw unless you call it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Here is Hannah's practice throw. And now it counts. Who's rooting for Andrea over here? <laughs> Who says boo? No, not Andrea. Boo. We got a dispute, let's see. 
impartial judge. What is, what is it, ladies? My daughter-in-law said it was a five. It's a bullseye, Andrea's team. Here is Lorette's throw. Let's hear for Lorette, first throw. Whoa, nice throw. Did that get in there? That's, is that also a bullseye? <laughs> That's a four. Good throw. All right, who's rooting for Alyssa over here? Yeah! That's a ball down. Yeah! That was great. Hey, hey, is anybody rooting for Hannah? Second throw for Andrea. She's already got a bullseye. Let's hear for Andrea. Yeah. And that's good for four. Got some great throwing going here, guys. Who's rooting for Lorette over there? Throw. All right, here's Alyssa's second throw. She's already got a bullseye. You want to see another one? Yeah. 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 Here comes Hannah. Who's rooting for Hannah? Yeah. Oh. She got them all with that one. <laughs> What'd you get? Four? All right. Are we on second throw or third? What did you want? Third? Okay. Who's got what for a score? Eight. So we got two eights. You've got nine. You've got ten. All right. So low score to high. Here's Lorette. She's got eight. A bullseye puts her right at the top. Let's hear for Hannah. She's also got eight. Oh, a four. So close. <laughs> All right, here comes Andrea. She's got nine. Come on, let's hear it, guys. And a bullseye. That gives, does that make it in there? I think that's in there. That's a bullseye, guys. Right now, Andrea is the current leader with 14. Here comes Alyssa. She's got a perfect score going. You want to see a perfect game here? Three bullseyes in a row. Oh. <laughs> and that's a, what do we got, a three? 13. Andrea wins it. Woo. Good throwing. Great throwing. Cross. Yeah. All right. Our next event is going to be back up at the front of the lumber yard here, guys, the log yard. And that is going to be at the saw stand. And they are going to do a team crosscut competition, the old fashioned crosscut saws. So, crosscut saws, when they came along, they revolutionized the timber industry. Before that, you had some pretty rudimentary saws, but most of the work was done with axes and hand tools that were not even close to resembling a crosscut saw or blade. When these saws came out, they revolutionized the industry so much, it wasn't long before two people with a crosscut could do the work of 10 men with axes. Now, those old time crosscut saws are nothing like the ones you see with the ladies right now. These ones the ladies are showing you are competition racing saws. They are extremely sharp, they're designed for racing, and the metal that's used, the alloy that's put together for that, 
Those saws, the metal is so sensitive that if it's left outside in weather like this, in half an hour they're going to start rusting up. Otherwise they have to keep continuously oiling them. So cross-cut competition is one of the more dangerous timber sports because if your, your uh, teammate catches on one of their pulls or pushes, or if you do, those blades are big and they're flexible, but they're hard. And if there's a catch in the wood, what's going to happen is you're going to slam your knuckles or your wrist into that blade and break your knuckles or wrist. Or if it's on a back pull, you could open up a hole in your leg with the blade of the saw. So what the ladies are doing right now is they're making what we call safety cuts. It's a one inch cut. You do this in any crosscut competition to kind of take out the chance at the beginning where the wood is still rounded of there being a catch and an injury. So this is going to be one cut down through. Make sure you cheer your team on through the whole event. As soon as they stop screwing around up there. <laughs> Who is rooting for Lorette and Hannah over here? Who's rooting for Andrea and Alyssa? Let's give them a countdown. Three, two, one, go! Ooh, there's a catch. Lorette and Hannah make a quick work. Who's going to go? There's another catch there. And here comes Andrea and Alyssa. Song. No, three more cuts each. Don't go. All right. We're going to give the ladies a chance to catch their breath. <laughs> and we'll give that lady a chance to catch her toddler there. <laughs> Got a future axe woman over there, I think. All right. Hey, we just want to take a moment to, to say how, how thankful we are to be back here at Top Sewell. We were here uh, a couple years ago, for three years in a row, I was so happy to be invited back to the 200th. The Axelman Loggers of Maine are very fortunate. We get to travel all around North America, Canada and the U.S., and, and do events like this, as well as competitions. And one of the cool things we see all over the continent is the great work that's being done by animal rescue shelters. Uh, they do a lot of good work. Uh, there's volunteers and people involved that just really give all to help out these animals. And it's important to Alyssa and I especially because we were lucky enough to be adopted by our little rescue guy a few years ago and he really made a really great change in our life. And he travels around with us now. And once we got him, we waited a couple weeks and then we posted his picture on Facebook to let family know that we had a pup. And Alyssa's mom called and said, yeah, I know that dog, I've seen him on Facebook. I'm like, what? <laughs> Turns out our dog had gone out and gotten a job. Steel USA had started using our dog in their promotions for rescue shelters. As, yeah, he'd become an ambassador for the rescues of rock stars. So now Pete travels around and he's got his own job with us and he just wants to come out and meet you guys. His name is Pete. Hey, Pete. And he is a plot hound. P-L-O-T-T. -T. He was rescued off the streets of Atlanta as a puppy. Hey, buddy. He had a rough go of it in the beginning, um, but he had a couple of really good foster families right off, and he is with his forever home now. He knows that there's a lot of good charities out there, as we all know that, but he would ask that you at least give a thought, and if you can't give a donation to your local rescue shelter, at least give a good word of mouth about them, or any time you can donate to help them out or any food or things like that, supplies, it's well appreciated by these people that work there, and especially by animals like Pete. So, he wants to say thank you all, and uh, ask if you would just give a thought to those rescue animals out there. Thanks, Pete. Hey, buddy, come here. What's up? Huh? What's up? Good boy. All right. And if, if anybody's interested after the show, back over here, Pete has what we call, it's a certificate, it's called a potograph, because uh, it's got his potograph on there, and uh, it's got a little story about Pete, his picture, and it's an official certificate, and five dollars for that, and that goes to New England Lab Rescues, the great shelter that managed to pair us up 
with Peter, and we found a great little companion there. So let's have a hand for all the rescue shelters and the people around the area. And let's get ready for the next competition, and it's going to be right up front again. And it is the underhand chop. The underhand chop is at those peeled block logs on the stands. They've been peeled to their bark because when you skid a log out of the forest, you get a lot of stone and dirt caught up in that bark, and that'll ruin the blade of an axe very quickly. The axes that the ladies are using today are amongst not only the most expensive, but the sharpest axes you'll find in the world. These are competition racing axes. They're also heavy. If anybody split wood, these are axes. These are not mauls, but they weigh six to eight pounds on the axe head. That's the same weight as a splitting maul. So, Andrea is using an axe made by Tuatai. Is that a Tuatai? Yep. And Lorette is using a precision axe. Tuatahi is a company out of New Zealand. They have kind of cornered the market on the best competition axes in the world for a long time. They're a really good company. But we're very happy recently that Precision Axe out of Death Valley, California has made that grade. And they're right up there with a competitive level of quality, the same as Tuatahi. And we're happy that we got a USA company up at the top, too. So we're happy with both companies. So let's hear for Precision. And an interesting note with Tuatahi, their quality assurance test, when they sell an axe head, a competition axe head, before that axe head goes out the door to the customer, the axe maker takes it and runs it down their arm to make sure it's as sharp as a razor to see if it'll shave the hair off their arm. Or their leg, I don't know, Lorette. Maybe their armpit, I just... <laughs> it will be a full grooming right there at the factory, but I doubt it. All right. So the ladies are going to stand on these block logs. They have chopped footholds there because so they'll be slippery. Other than that, they're going to start with their best side facing the crowd. They're going to chop halfway through the log, spin around, and chop the rest of the way through. Now, they're swinging these razor-sharp axes right between their feet balanced up there. You'd think you'd want to be quiet. Just the opposite. Make sure you root your team on through the whole event. These are world champion competitors. They need your cheering to fuel their adrenaline, and that gets them through these tough chops. So who's rooting for Andrea over here? <laughs> who's rooting for Lorette on this side? <laughs> All right, well, let's give them a countdown. Three, Three two, two, one, go. <laughs> Watch the camera chopping with. dangerous thing in the world to a lumberjack. It wasn't cutting down a tree that was at a funny angle. It was getting out on a log jam. Because if they fell in while they, they were trying to free up that log jam, it was almost certain death. Either from drowning, or getting crushed by the logs, or dying from hypothermia in the cold water. Like today. <laughs> Whoops, there goes that new lumberjack right there. So, so you may want to invest in some Velcro. Uh, so that dangerous job evolved into a sport that's known worldwide today as burling or log rolling. And when you see it on TV, the competitors are typically wearing steel spikes because on the TV shows, they typically have the competition at a venue that has a cement pool. There's only about a half dozen of those around the country that allow that. So if you used a vinyl pool like most competitions and we have here today, with steel spikes, if you do the math, there'd be one log roll at the beginning of the day and then water all over the place. So what you do instead is you get rid of the spikes, 
you wear flat soled shoes similar to tennis shoes. We've got a key log in here, but it's a log rolling log. You will see these logs in the Olympics in the very near future. Burling will be in the Olympics down the road in a few years. Yep. And it's pretty cool. Will you see those, that yellow center strip there? That's the boundary line. You're not allowed to cross over to the other side. You're not allowed to cross over to the other side, Alyssa. But in the old days, there was no boundary line. There were no rules. Anything went. You could run over to your competitor's side and slap them. <laughs> you could poke them. You could punch them. Literally punch them in the nose. You could kick them. You could bite them. You could spit in their eye. You can't do that anymore, Hannah. <laughs> but what you are allowed to do, if you dare, there's two tactics that are allowed. They're pretty tricky, though, because remember your opponent's trying to knock you off the log at the same time. You can get the log rocking by shifting your position on the log and moving your weight around. The other thing you can do, it's much trickier, is for just a split second while that log is, is spinning, you balance on one foot and kick water into your opponent's face. I know, and, but it's a real tactic, and both these ladies are good at it. And what that does is your reflexes, you shut your eyes, and all of a sudden you're in the water. So, this is the best three out of five, or whoever freezes first. <laughs> Who is rooting for Hannah over here? Who is rooting for Alyssa over here? All right, let's give it a good roll. Here we go, watch the footwork. There's a kick and another kick. Oh, 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 and Hannah takes the first one just by a show. All right. One nothing, Hannah. Who wants to see Alyssa tie it up? <laughs> Who wants to see Hannah go up two nothing? Oh, oh. Ooh. That, yeah, that was a not ready roll. Yeah. <laughs> so that's not an official roll. Both both rollers have to have both their feet on the log as it goes off the dock before it's counted as an official roll. So here we go. Still one nothing, Hannah. Oh! And play in the wind. It looks like Hannah's up two nothing. Oh, oh dear. Hannah's up two nothing. You want to see her win this? All right. Alyssa's team. Do you want to see her start to climb back into this one? Hey, before they do that, after the show, if you're interested, it's a little chilly. But if you've got kids ages 5 to 12, and you're the parent of legal guardians, you got to sign a waiver. But the ladies will provide log rolling lessons. For real. The kids are going to go home wet and probably cold. So be aware of that. Um, the other thing, if you want to bring the kids over for autographs or pictures, just bring them around over here by the axe target. Afterwards, more than happy to take pictures and do autographs and stuff. And they also have some cool souvenirs available. They've got shirts, axe woman shirts, can koozies, uh, wood cookie magnets that they made, and then they've got a couple of uh, styles of stickers for you. So, thank you, Andre. Thank you, Lorette. All right, it's 2 nothing, Hannah. Who wants to see Hannah take it all? Who wants to see Alyssa get back in this? Oh, oh, and Alyssa's team, she's crawling back into this. Hannah's team, you're kind of in a good spot. She just has to win one, so you want to see her do it? There they go. Who's got, oh, oh, and a foot step, and oh! Hannah takes it. Let's have one more big hand for Lorette, Andrea, Hannah, and Alyssa, the Axelman Loggers of Maine. Thank you so much, folks. We've got another show at 7 o'clock. Enjoy the fair. We hope to see you back here. Thank you all.
to it. And miss. Keep going. Okay. So you yeah. want to follow up. All right. Get it here. No, don't do it like that. Hey, hey, hey. See how it's done? Good luck, Lisa. Keep it going, keep it going. What if he shoots a uh, what if he shoots a lighter? Alright, so the thing with the lighter is if you knock the lighter flat like this on my shelf, it's a small price. Okay. Right? You have to knock my lighter off the back of my shelf, not the front of it, right? It has to be off the back. If you knock it off the back, it'll give you a choice of anything. Okay. Alright? You win a Oh, it's working. It's working. All right, Ron, so what we're going to do, we're going to go like this. Easiest way, Dan, you know, get to push this all the way so it clicks. You have to lock in, take the pull. Snug right in there. Now you aim. All right. And when you aim, look right in between here. Yeah! Oh, nice! 